Dragon Age Inquisition proves that even the most serious missteps can be corrected. Whereas Dragon Age Origins was a grand adventure that harkened back to the days of Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale, Dragon Age 2 seemed like a rushed effort that misinterpreted its predecessor's best parts. Largely taking place in a lone city, Dragon Age 2 felt constrained and its dungeons were often identical to one another. Inquisition is a fierce response to those criticisms. Not only is the game sprawling to an intimidating degree, the story matches its vast landscapes. There's so much to embroil yourself in as the leader of a valiant army that it's hard getting bored even after a hundred hours of play. Without a doubt, Inquisition is one of the most enthralling role-playing games of the year. Inquisition isn't the most welcoming to the uninitiated. The game rapidly throws out names of people, groups, and causes that can be hard to keep track of if you're fresh to the series. It's a testament to the storytelling that persistence is greatly rewarded. Inquisition is a slow burn that uses the enormous settings to its advantage. Party members will chatter amongst themselves, dropping hints of history and personal tragedy. As you explore, you'll encounter numerous letters, inscriptions, and scrolls that illuminate political motivations and cultural details. By the end of Inquisition's long journey, you'll be so full of knowledge that you'll feel inextricably connected to the game's world. It's so rich and detailed that it becomes a character in its own right. It's surprising, then, that the broad narrative is quite predictable. An old, powerful evil has risen up, commanding a horde of demons bent on causing ruination. As a chosen one of sorts, you're in charge of building a force capable of taking on this evil and closing the demon rifts with a special mark on your hand. It's all so cliché that it's shocking how little impact it has on your enjoyment. Dragon Age Inquisition is not a game reliant on broad strokes, but instead dozens of small stories that build a meaningful whole. These stories largely come from characters. Cole, an enigmatic party member, shows unwavering empathy and concern over the suffering of others, even if that means causing momentary pain. The Iron Bull, another recruitable ally, is a giant Kunari mercenary leader. Although he could have easily fallen into the gruff, scoundrel stereotype, he's instead disarmingly honest, progressive, honorable, and sympathetic. Heard a lot of stories about him. No idea which ones are true. All of the party members have such great qualities that it's hard not talking about every single one of them. While you'll certainly have favorites, you'll also likely feel a twinge of regret when it comes time to form a group and you have to leave most of them behind. Yet they're far from the only characters worth mentioning. One dwarf that enchants your gear is rebellious and quirky. She forsook her smithing heritage and embraced a love of magic. It turns out she also has a bizarre fascination with fire. Every conversation with her is charming and awkward in equal measure. During a quest in the hinterlands, you can help a rancher that's lost one of his rams. What makes this interesting is that the rancher believes the ram can talk, having full conversations while it stands there silently. Bioware is renowned for creating remarkable, relatable characters, and Dragon Age Inquisition shows that the reputation is rightly earned. We've got trouble ahead. Even more impressive is how these personal stories seep in despite the game's scale. You actually feel like you're leading a large force, which only grows over time. Much of your command is issued at the war table, where you can send spies, emissaries, or soldiers to do your bidding. Eventually, your army is housed in the mountaintop fortress of Skyloft, and player hubs are rarely so grand. A venerable fortress, you can forge new armor and weapons, modify existing gear, and alchemize potions. You'll also regularly be asked to judge criminals for their crimes. Sometimes the results are humorous and morbid, such as putting a corpse on trial, and sometimes they're firm, such as beheading the guilty with your own sword. It effectively captures the might of authority without being mired in tedium. What can be frustrating is how Inquisition gates progress. In order to complete the story and conduct certain side operations, you need to spend a currency known as power, which is obtained by doing tasks both large and small in various regions. As the power requirements jump higher and higher, it feels like Dragon Age Inquisition is artificially extending the hour count. Since there's so much to do, it's not an egregious sin, but it's definitely a needless one. While the structure and size of Inquisition is decidedly different, the combat is a mix of Origins and Dragon Age 2. It offers the immediacy of 2 while also incorporating the tactical camera of Origins. At any moment, you can pause the game and issue orders to each individual party member. A new addition is that constant pausing and unpausing is no longer required. Instead, you can slowly move time forward and stop to make adjustments or new commands as needed. <laughs> Considering how idiotic your party can be, it's nice having the tactical camera as an option. If left to their own volition, archers and mages will attack at point-blank range when they're far more effective assaulting from the back lines. Far more worrisome are other numerous bugs that prevented progress multiple times. The most common one was when the conversation wheel simply didn't appear, halting the story. In another instance, we defeated a boss but weren't given credit. 
We were left trapped in a tiny arena until the game crashed a few minutes later. There are other small problems as well, such as choppy cutscenes, odd animations, and characters getting stuck in the environment. Since we've only played the Xbox One version, we can't say if these bugs exist on other platforms. A day one patch is forthcoming that may resolve these complaints, but right now, technical blunders are the major thing holding Inquisition back from true excellence. What the game undoubtedly nails is character progression. Although there are only three archetypes, warrior, rogue, and mage, there's an abundance of variation within them thanks to specializations. One rogue, for example, may be an expert archer that can flip in the air and fire explosive shots, while another relies on stealth and devastating strikes with twin daggers. Even better is that nearly every skill unlocked feels significant and can change your approach. It's fantastic how dramatically your group will grow over the course of the game. Cooperative multiplayer is an interesting, but not entirely successful addition. Up to four players progress through a level, fighting off waves of enemies and looting treasure. With a proper team of friends, it's great coordinating abilities and classes since the multiplayer is challenging enough that it rewards those who do so. Yet Dragon Age isn't nearly as captivating without its world. Fighting the same types of monsters in the same areas loses its appeal quickly, and you may find yourself darting back to single player sooner than anticipated. The so-called Herald of Andraste claiming to rise where our beloved men. Yet Dragon Age Inquisition is one of those rare games where its flaws sound severe on paper, but often melt away when you're actually playing. We can't remember the last time we've been so thoroughly absorbed by a virtual place, or so attached to a cast of characters. In that sense, Dragon Age Inquisition is a flawed journey, but it's one that we eagerly want to return to.